So hello and welcome to Attention Collectors. Wikimedia Commons needs you, a virtual editing table with the Feminist Institute. Uh, my name is Kira, my pronouns are she, her, and I am the executive director at Art and Feminism. For those of you new to Art and Feminism, welcome. And to our existing community, welcome back. As an organization, Art and Feminism builds a community of information activists committed to closing information gaps related to feminism, gender, and the arts. We host an annual campaign where we invite folks like you to organize an edit-a-thon or another information gap related event for your community. This year, our theme is solidarity, solidarity, solidarity. We're not all in this together. As part of this year's campaign, we've hosted several virtual events, including today's session. This is the last of our Art and Feminism virtual editing tables for this year. Uh, you can visit the recordings from past editing tables, as well as the two conversations we've had on our YouTube page and on Wikimedia Commons. This session is being recorded. And whereas Art and Feminism events do happen year round, our typical campaign season is wrapping up and we'll be having a team retreat and entering our planning season in the coming weeks. But it's not too late to organize. So if you're interested or perhaps after this session inspired to organize your own art and feminism event, please do get in touch. Today's editing table features our very own Northeast Regional Ambassador, Allison Bates, along with Marie Williams Chant and Allison Elliott of the Feminist Institute. The Feminist Institute documents and celebrates feminist contributions to culture by preserving and digitizing archival materials for public access. TFI promotes information activism and gender equity by infilling the cultural records to reflect fuller truths. So to get us started, I wanna hand it over to Alison Marie. And so first I will read their bios. Marie Williams Chan is an archivist interested in digital preservation, feminist art, software preservation, and web archives. She's currently the director of archives and special projects at the Feminist Institute, where she developed and oversaw the organization's first five-year strategic plan and managed the design and development of the new feministinstitute.org. Allison Elliott is an archivist interested in queer and counter histories, community archives, autonomous memory sites, feminist networks, and information activism. She is currently the manager and archives, and, uh, sorry, of archives and programs at the Feminist Institute, where she develops content partnerships, creates digital collections, and produces TFI's annual pop-up memory lab. So with that, I want to hand it over to Maureen Allison. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for that intro. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Allison, um, Programs and Archives Manager here at the Feminist Institute. And today I'm going to share a little bit about um, the Feminist Institute's programs and our partnership models. I'm just going to share my screen. Okay. Um, yeah, so we are here today to talk about um, Wikimedia Commons. Um, and kind of our partnership model and how these things interact. Um, on this screen, you're seeing in the background, it's one of Dinga McCannon's who I will talk about more um, in a moment. One of her multimedia um, fiber books that tell different stories about her life. Um, and there's a little bit of a pink opaque square over it. And then the Feminist Institute, Attention Collectors, Wikimedia Commons Needs You. Um, and Marie William Chant, who was introduced previously, our Director of Archives and Special Projects, and then Allison Elliott. I'm Allison, and this, and I'm the Managers of Archives and Programs. Okay. So our agenda for today, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Feminist Institute's mission, um, go into our digital archive and just give a bit of an overview of that, our partnership model and how that kind of feeds into our mission and the digital archive and then Dinga McCannon's collection um, as she is a wonderful case study and example of kind of how our partnership model is all the way through. Um, and on the right of the screen, you're seeing it's um, Dinga McCannon. She makes a lot of wearable art um, like fiber materials. So she used to kind of hand out these flyers in her own communities as a way to make a living um, as an artist. 
Um, so about TFI, the Feminist Institute documents and celebrates feminist contributions to culture by preserving and digitizing archival materials for public access in our digital archive. TFI promotes information activism and gender equity by infilling the cultural record to reflect fuller truths. Um, and in the background, again, I kind of designed this presentation around Diga McCannon because I was talking about her and also her materials are so amazing. So this is um, in the background, like an opaque quilt um, kind of zoomed in that she made and then with a white square over it with the Feminist Institute mission. Um, and basically what we're trying to do is create a digital archive that highlights and brings feminist um, culture to the forefront and is also open access because as we know, a lot of archives require institutional access or have geographical um, limitations and kind of, you know, as Kira was talking about with art and feminism, we see what we do as information activism um, by making these materials more accessible. So this is just a screenshot of our digital archive and the collections we have up currently. Um, our website and archive was designed um, by Linked by Air. They're an incredible technology firm that often works with cultural organizations. Um, and Marie Williams Chant had a huge hand in designing the beautiful website. So kudos to her as always. Um, we, our archive is designed to be very multimedia. Um, because obviously culture is very multimedia and it's great to be able to include sounds and videos and still images, ephemera, um, these different kinds of things to really make the archive more interactive. Um, and yeah, we also too, we use collective access as our database. It's an open source um, archival database, meaning that anybody can use it and you can also personalize it to your needs. Um, really the strong point about this database is it's very um, relational. So for example, um, as you can see in the top left corner, the AIR gallery collection, and then the top right corner, the Mary Beth Edelston collection, these two collections are very, I would say intertwined. Um, there's kind of a lot of the same people featured in both, a lot of the same exhibitions, collectives. So we can really, go in our database and relate those objects together. And then the website, say you were like clicking on a flyer from AIR Gallery and Mary Beth Edelson was featured in one of those, you would see her collection below to again, kind of really make the archive interactive and more alive. Um, yeah, and it's just really, I don't know, I think as a powerful tool for digital archives and kind of helping to show how also feminist culture and feminist history and history at large is very intertwined and has a more collective nature than I think sometimes is described in more um, mainstream historical narratives. So our partnership model, um, and on this slide you're seeing again, this is, um, I think I'm forgetting the exact name of the magazine, but it was a magazine cover about um, an event in Harlem that Dinga McCannon helped to organize. Um, and then over it, you're seeing partnership model in our dotted text um, on a yellow background, and then two white squares with partnership types and partnership ethos and practices in little pink rectangles at the top. Um, so I'll start with the partnership types. Our first one is collaborative digitization and in a union catalog. So this means that we might talk with an artist or a collective who's looking to pursue an archival collection um, and kind of doing that selection and curating together for digitization um, and then making, you know, a catalog where it unionizes all these materials together. Um, we also have done partnerships that kind of is more of a physical records rescue and digitization. Um, an example of this, Mary Beth Edelson, who passed in 2018, um, we went into her studio. She was an artist who really kept a lot of her records, um, different letters, drawings, really just amazing stuff. Um, but it was all mostly going to be thrown out. So in 2018, the Feminist Institute um, put a team together and went to her studio and saved a lot of material. Um, and then we also do Born Digital Sunsetting and Preservation, um, which this is more of Marie's um, expertise, but I can talk to it just um, especially where so much obviously kind of 2000s forward, a lot of feminist culture is on the internet. So 
you know, um, web archiving different, maybe feminist media sites or activist sites or blog spots, things like that. Um, because as the internet progresses and different software goes obsolete or is just disappears, so do those websites and we lose that piece of feminist culture. So it's really important that we get a snapshot of that. Um, and it's really great with web archive, um, the web archiving tool. It's an interactive website where you can click around and really, you can also, you know, click to external links like the press and things like that um, to get a fuller cultural picture. Um, so our partnership ethos and practices, we um, ground all of our partnerships in a feminist ethics of care. Um, this means that we really center relationship building in the archiving that we do. It's kind of, it is, um, I guess, yeah, an intervention to more institutional models of archives where it is, it becomes so, somewhat locked away. And again, it's like you might need a university ID or be in a specific place to be able to see these materials where a feminist ethics of care really tries to be like have these archival materials and the process be embedded in the communities that they're documenting um, and also looks to archives as a social practice. Um, within this, we also practice collaborative cataloging, which is a really exciting new thing that we've started to do. Um, I personally love it. We have, we're kind of lo-fi with it right now, but thinking about designing a collaborative cataloging tool at some point. Um, but also on that note, we do sometimes we're working with older people or maybe people who don't have as many tech skills and sometimes keeping things lo-fi is the way to go. Um, and it doesn't make it any lesser, but um, right now, essentially what I will do is make a spreadsheet and I'll input um, the images of each object and then have basic columns like the title, description, year, um, copyright options, and then a credit line that we collaboratively create. Um, and I'll take the first step and say, if it was a flyer for an exhibition, I'll pull out like the exhibition title, the date of the flyer, the artist involved and make just a basic description for that um, and go through there. And then I will do a Zoom interview with um, the records keeper basically um, and just get their approval on things and also any anecdotal notes or experiences they might have or like memories that come up from a certain object, um, which is also, it's so fun to hear people's stories. And again, is what I think makes this work so interesting. Um, and then we'll go back, transcribe that interview. Again, do kind of, I guess, essentially some copy editing, add in those anecdotal details. Um, and then finally, we'll go through it one more time with the records um, keeper and get final approval on that. And then we'll upload everything. So it's definitely, it's a longer um, process, but again, I think it's really worth it to um, have a practice of people, you know, having autonomy over their materials. And it also just makes the collection a lot richer. Um, and yeah, on a personal note, I really enjoy talking to people about their materials. Um, and then finally, the Feminist Institute, we are a post-custodial archival collection which essentially that means we don't maintain any copyright um, over the materials that we're posting, um, which falls in line too with our open access practice. Um, but we are not looking to own things. We more want to put them online, um, relate them to different movements and people that they might have these collections kind of interact with and just make them accessible for researchers, artists, students, anybody who's interested in feminist culture and history. Um, to be able to look at and enjoy and use in their projects and that sort of thing. Yeah, and this is Marie speaking. Just one note on the post-custodial collection type. Uh, just We really just work to digitize materials um, and we don't own any of the physical materials. So that's really just the clarifying note on that. So thank you so much, Allison. Yeah, thank you. Um, okay, so now I'm going to move into Dingan McCannon's collect, um, capsule collection. This is just a screenshot of how the collection shows up on our website when you first click on it. Um, unfortunately, I'm not tech savvy enough to do this, but when you, if you were to move your mouse to the right through this, um, the images would pop up one by one, kind of like you were flipping through a box of materials. So Dingan McCannon, this is a picture of her um, on the right. She's wearing 
um, both like a soon hat and vest that she made. Um, again, she did a lot of wearable art and she's standing in front of one of her um, works that actually I'm pretty sure was inspired or it inspired um, the piece that she had up at the memory lab recently. But again, she really is a fiber artist. And then below this is the, oh my gosh, I'm 60 multimedia art book that was on that first slide. Um, I really, I love her art books. I think they're so amazing. And again, it's just really cool how they also tell a personal story within them um, through different fiber practices. But now I'm just going to read a little bit about who Dinga McCannon is. So Dinga McCannon is a visual and fiber artist, muralist, teacher, author, and illustrator. McCannon was born and raised in Harlem, New York City. She retells stories and histories of Black women through her mixed media fiber practice. In the early 1960s, she participated in several activist groups, leading her to join the permanent Wiyuzi Artists Collective, a group that supported and gave voice to Black artists, allowing them to express and exhibit their ideas freely. Together with Faith Ringgold and Kay Brown, McKinnon later formed Where We At Black Women Artists, Inc., pioneering a new form of community-based arts education. So our partnership model, again, I really think that Dinga is an incredible case study of this. Um, it started with our pop-up memory lab in 2023. Um, she was a part of the exhibition surrounding the memory lab, um, who's afraid of feminist archives. Um, so she created, did an appointment with us and brought in probably around a hundred materials. Um, and we digitized those during the memory lab. Um, and then she came and picked up those materials. And during the memory lab, also just to explain a little bit of that, it is our largest program um, where the public can come and book appointments to digitize their analog materials or just have an archival consultation um, or both. And that program is really aimed at empowering individuals to preserve their analog and digital legacy um, and just making these archival services more accessible. Um, and a lot of the feedback I get from participants is how amazing it is um, really to just, yeah, have this opportunity for a free service because hiring um, an independent archivist or um, obtaining all of the different digitization equipment you need is pretty cost prohibitive. Um, and again, the pop-up memory lab really aims at kind of making these archi archives a more activated space and also a space for community building and connection. Um, and we also do different mini programs within those. For example, um, this year we did a showcase evening where we showed four short films that integrated archival footage into their narrative. And that was really amazing. Um, yeah, so it's a it's a great program. I love doing it. Um, and yeah, Dingo's partnership started there. And also on this slide again, um, in the background, you're seeing a very opaque uh, flyer for a fiber exhibition in Harlem, I'm pretty sure is where it was. And then just the yellow box that says TFI plus Dinga McCannon partnership. Um, and then three white squares with different yellow headers. The first one is how did our partnership just, uh, how did our partnership start, which is what I just spoke about. Um, Dinga McCannon joint doing our memory lab. Um, and then the next one is collaborative cataloging. And the final one is feminist, feminist ethics of care and practice. Um, so after we finished digitizing Dinga McCannon's materials at the Memory Lab, um, this was the first time we did collaborative cataloging, I would say, um, mostly because Dinga's materials, I found them so interesting and a lot of them I did have questions about. So I kind of just figured like, why not have Dinga kind of take the lead on this um, and we can really make this collection very like rich and textured. Um, and again, as I spoke about a little bit before, um, the collaborative cataloging process positions the record holder as the expert, which I think is a really important practice in retelling history. Um, I did, yeah, a collaborative cataloging sheet with all of her objects. We did our interview and then transcription, and then she gave final approval over these materials. Um, and again, it was just like a very enjoyable experience. And I think Dinga is such like an inspirational person. Um, and she's very passionate about legacy building, which I think is so important. And so much of her work too, it really focuses on specifically black women and black women artists who inspired her when she was saying kind of like there was really nobody or there wasn't just, there wasn't a lot of space for black women artists. Um, so it, 
it seems to really all tie together both in her practice and her values. Um, and it's just great to work with somebody who, yeah, holds that passion for legacy building. Um, and again, I, yeah, I felt like this was a feminist ethics of care and practice and just an experience I learned a lot about um, and was, yeah, just very foundational to my work as an archivist, um, where it felt like we were really focusing on the relationship building. And I mean, even with, um, you know, this program, it's like we started working with Dinga over a year ago, and we're still doing different programs with her and activating um, her collection and things like that. And yeah, she has autonomy over the materials. And it just feels like a very collaborative, holistic process um, that's really reflected of feminist values and what we do here at TFI. Um, and this is my last slide. So I hope you all enjoyed this presentation. Um, if you're interested, definitely go check out our digital archive. It's just thefeministinstitute.org and our digital archive is there. Um, and also to keep up with different programs we're doing, we're just the Feminist Institute on Instagram. And we also have a Substack, um, thefeministinstitute.substack.com, where we do one monthly newsletter that kind of highlights different collections we're doing, programs, that sort of thing. Um, and I would love to see you all at a digital program or memory lab or just have you check out our collections. And thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Allison. Thank you, Marie. Um, just such exciting work. We're so excited to just share space with you and just, uh, you know, we're big fans. So excited to be here with you all. Um, I am next going to hand it over to Allison with one L. Um, Allison Bates is the Northeast Regional Ambassador for Art and Feminism, a librarian based in Western Massachusetts. Allison will soon be starting a new role as the director for a small rural library in Vermont. So uh, over, over to you, Allison. Thank you, Kira. This is Allison B. talking, Allison with one L. Um, now we're going to talk a little bit about um, the Wikimedia Commons aspect of this, uh, this whole presentation. So let me just share my screen. I lost it. There we go. All right. Um, so I've titled this section, uh, Be Bold, Be Respectful, Uploading to Wiki Wikimedia Commons. Um, it's a nod to this idea that we um, should be respectful of creators and their work while also being bold and uploading when we can. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, so here's a brief agenda. Um, I'll go over, uh, oh, let me just say really quickly, the slides um, ha to have like a little bit of um, like a fuzzy, colorful background that's just there as decoration. I'll mostly be reading all of the text on there. And if there's any uh, visual elements that are important, I'll be sure to describe those. Um, so here's our agenda for this half of the presentation. Uh, first, I'll, I'll go over what is Wikimedia Commons. Um, what can we upload and what does it all mean? Um, a little bit about archives and the commons. Uh, we'll talk about licensing. Um, after that, we will make accounts or link uh, accounts. If we already have Wikipedia accounts, we can link that to Wikimedia Commons. Um, we're going to upload images and we'll talk a little bit too about um, the, a plan that we had for this presentation today that didn't work and why it didn't. And then we're kind of going to work together to make something make something else happen. Um, we'll also add information and licensing image uh, information to the images that we upload. And then we then I'll show you how to um, add an image to a Wikipedia page. So what is Wikimedia Commons? Well, it's a media file repository for public domain and freely licensed media content. It contains images, sounds, and video. And what what's the point? Um, well, it's largely, I would argue, used to illustrate Wikipedia Commons or Wikip sorry, <laughs> Wikipedia pages. Um, but there are other uses. Uh, for instance, you can use Wiki Wikimedia Commons imagery or material for a course that you're teaching or for a zine that you make. Um, basically, whatever you want to do with this stuff, you can. Um, and I have a little question here, if anyone um, feels so inclined to participate. Um, have you ever used Wikimedia Commons before? 
And if yes, how did you use it? Um, on this slide, I have um, an image from Wikimedia Commons of two facilitators um, for a um, art feminism uh, edit-a-thon. So what, what can we upload to Wikimedia Commons? Well, I think of it kind of in two categories, um, and I'll go over here to the, to the left. Um, for our own works, I'll pretty much not anything goes, but a lot goes. Um, photos of natural landscapes, animals, plants, um, photos of public figures and people photographed in public places, um, photo photographs of useful or non-artistic objects, um, and also, it's not only photographs, of course, you can also do original graphs, maps, diagrams, and audio. So if there are any designers in the audience or musicians who feel music, I don't know about musicians, but audio engineers who um, are ready to, to upload things, that's, that's awesome. Um, but in terms of works by others, uh, you are able to upload works by others. Um, it's okay to go. Go ahead if you've been given permission. Um, it's okay to upload uh, your own photographs of old art, statues, and buildings, and also works in the public domain. Um, and in the middle, we have a photograph um, from Wikimedia Commons of a vase looking at itself in an ornate mirror, as, as a vase should. Uh, let me just check the chat, see if there's anything really quickly. Oh, it's great to see what folks are using, um, how people are using the comments. Thank you so much for for chiming in and feel free to keep chime, keep telling us more if you uh, if you feel so inclined. Um, so let's talk a little bit about archives and the commons. Uh, so how can archives and private collectors, of course, work with Wikimedia Commons? Well, I think importantly, you can collect materials. You can steward things that you think are important and give them a safe home. Um, you can determine copyright and use, uh, ensure that you either own or have permission to upload, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit more in a minute. Um, you can upload things when, ap when applicable, adding stuff to Wikimedia Commons. And you can use things in um, in the commons onto relevant Wikipedia pages. Um, there are so many initiatives that work to pair things that are already in the commons um, with Wikipedia pages. You know, it's not an uh, automatic process. It takes, um, takes our human hands. Um, and here I have a question. Um, what, what do you collect if you collect anything? Um, what kind of stuff do you collect? Um, I don't know if you can tell behind me, I have a um, pretty robust uh, collection of Virago books, um, less ephemera at this point from them, but I'd love to get into that. Um, and here pictured, we have a uh, a cake that is a likeness of the Art and Feminism logo, also from Wikimedia Commons, of course. Um, so what does it mean to upload? To the commons? Great question. Um, uploading to the commons means that pretty much anyone can access those materials. Um, as mentioned before, Wikimedia Commons uh, is intended to illustrate Wikipedia articles, um, but open use is okay according to the license, which we'll talk about in just a moment. And it's something to keep in mind before uploading. Um, you may uh, upload something with the intention of illustrating an, art an article, but you have to understand that um, that it could be used in other ways. Um, but I don't want to be scary. Um, I also want to note that uploading is really awesome and it's contributing to free visual knowledge and it's a really cool and great thing to do. Um, so Marie is going to speak briefly about um, what it means to be a good steward and um, how to kind of understand when it's okay for you to use things. So I'll pass it over to you, Marie. Of course, Allison. And hi, everyone. This is Marie from the Feminist Institute. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I preface this all with the fact that I am not providing any legal advice. And if you have any specific questions about your materials or digital collections, 
to confirm with the relevant bodies. Um, also, this is pretty highly specific to US copyright law, but I still think it is generally interesting to all parties involved. And if you're not US based, definitely check out your local laws. Um, so I think it's really important, especially as part of our work with the Feminist Institute to note that copyright and obtaining permission is really a key aspect of providing digital access to unpublished archival materials and all materials generally. Um, the internet really does provide the means for increased access, but it's really not as simple as uploading everything without a consideration of rights, as our friend Alison B has already noted. Um, to provide access to both digitized and foreign digital are just materials that kind of originated as digital files, a lot really has to happen behind the scenes before digital objects can be make their way to your screens. So archives specifically are filled with copyrighted materials and over the years, archivists have provided access to them in their reading rooms or in some limited cases, they've provided born digital access under certain circumstances. But just because archives hold these physical and born digital documents, it does not necessarily mean they hold the copyright. Um, it's interesting to note that many donors or sellers of unpublished archival materials retain the creative rights for material for which they are the right holder at the time of sale or donation. So in the case of US copyright law, um, copyright um, for unpublished work lasts for the life of the author plus 70 years. Um, if the author or the author's death date is, in, is unknown or the author is a corporate body, then that term is actually 120 years from the creation date for the work. So <laughs> therefore many unpublished material in archives or manuscript collections are likely under copyright. In the US, um, sections 107 and 108 of copyright law provides archives and libraries with pretty limited authority to make copies of copyrighted material without permission under certain conditions, such as when the copy is to be used for private study, scholarship, or research. So our academic friends, <laughs> that's why they're always in archives and doing research and able to use these things. But um, a lot of the time, sections 107 and 108 do not apply to individuals, though section 107 does codify the fair use doctrine. So I think this is the important tie to Wikimedia Commons in that fair use does recognize that there are uses that do not infringe on the rights of copyright holders and provides a defense for the use of these materials without permission. But in the case of uploading materials to Wikimedia Commons, they do not accept fair use media files and they will be deleted upon upload. I think this is, as we've just noted with everything I've just said, this is like a very complicated issue. And in the case of Wikimedia Commons, since there's so many different copyright laws and different rights laws across the world, I think it is just, it's just too complicated under certain, certain circumstances. So that's why it's really important that you need to have permission or they need to be openly licensed for you and able to upload to Wikimedia Commons. So in the case of our partnership model, we work really incredibly closely with our partners in order to provide this post-custodial access to digitized or born digital records. When we work with individuals, we conduct rights assessment and determine applicable rights statements. I'm gonna drop this in the chat um, just so you can see rights statements. It's a great tool that it provides a set of standardized rights statements that can be used to communicate the copyright and reuse status of digital objects to the public. Um, in addition, um, we can also apply Creative Commons licenses. So some items on our site are added through a pretty thorough fair use assessment. And when we work with larger institutions on partnerships, we definitely go through thorough rights review and obtains rights where necessary. Um, I guess for context, as we've navigated our partnerships, both big and small, it's kind of become evident that digitization and digital access really needs to be negotiated as a part of the acquisition project process for archives and museums and this general community, just because a lot of the time when materials were acquired 
this wasn't even something to consider at the time. So kind of updating practices to allow for broader digitization or broader applicability of things like Creative Commons licenses would mean more open access to digitized or born digital cultural heritage. Um, so the Digital Library Federation put together a great list of actions that institutions, institutions and like cultural heritage workers can take in order to kind of broaden access to newly acquired archival collections. Um, one of those is to negotiate open license with, with donors if the donor owns the copyright. Um, I think traditional donation agreements typically prompt donors to retain copyright by default. So I think having these conversations before acquisition kind of opens up the possibilities for different models of sharing. So that could be um, the donor transferring or licensing copyright to the institute institution upon donation or after a specified period of time after donation. So it could be like 20, 30 years or upon the donor's death. Um, there's many ways that this could happen. Um, when we work with individuals, we typically are granted a non-exclusive license in order to provide educational access to archival materials. Um, the non-exclusive license is really beneficial when a donor still wants to benefit commercially from their materials. Um, another option would be to ask a donor to license their work under a Creative Commons license. Um, and to, it would be really important for the institution to document the terms of the license and the deed of gift. I think there's also a, a middle ground here, which is to consider a compromise and ask the donor to transfer the copyright to the institution and the institution pledges to release it under a CCBY attribution license. So I think moving forward, um, there's practices that um, like libraries, archives, and museums can update, uh, specifically thinking about in the deed of gift or an addendum to the deed that really specifically addresses digitization, copyright, and usage, and also addresses the acquisition of born digital materials so that um, we could provide online accesses to those materials and kind of document any type of practices that might need to be undertaken to transfer those materials to an institution. So that was my long spiel on good stewardship. <laughs> Back to you, Alison. <laughs> Thank you so much, Marie. That was an incredible spiel. Um, that's years of schooling, folks, and and many more in the field to understand, um, even broach this subject. Um, so complicated, but um, it's really an illuminating path forward, I think, and um, something to keep in mind when you're also a an individual. Um, so speaking of Creative Commons licensing, let's talk about it. Um. So on the screen here, I have um, three columns. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. There's a little um, like lo uh, logo that's um, that goes along with the licensing um, above each, and then I'll I'll read what's there. Um, so CC zero zero yeah zero <laughs> zero. Um, that is like the most open I think that you can get. Um, creators give up copyright completely. Their works enter the public domain, and at that point, anything goes. Um, a little bit to the to the right is um, on the screen is um, CCBY. Um, so reusers can do anything with the material, including commercial uses, as long as they credit the creator. And then one step farther on that is a CCBYSA. Reusers can do anything with the material, including commercial uses, uses <laughs> as long as they credit the creator. And any adaptations must be licensed under the same terms. Now, why do I have only these three licenses on the screen and not a million? I'll tell you why. Um, <laughs> when I was making this slide, I had a million up here. Um, and as we were finalizing our presentation, um, I was reminded that um, Wikimedia Commons only allows uploading of, of works, I mean, you know, there's a separate separate clause, but um, works that are licensed under these three under these three terms. Um, so there are, of course, more 
more licenses that you can license your work under. I'm specifically thinking about, you know, non-commercial um, clauses for your licenses, but anything with a non-commercial license can then be put on Wikimedia Commons. Um, why am I harping on this? First of all, it's important. Um, second of all, this explains a bit more about um, kind of what, what happened today with our original plan. So um, we got a, um, we licensed, we spoke with, um, well, the Feminist Institute um, was uh, talking with Dinga about um, how to license her work for this, this, um, organiz uh, for this workshop. We had hoped um, to be able to upload her works. Um, and then I remembered that only these three things were available um, for uploading to the Commons. So it's really important that um, people who want to upload make it very aware, make make any copyright holders or people who might be interested in licensing um, more openly understand that um, these are the only licenses that will that will kind of make it past um, the the robots on um, on Wikimedia Commons. Um, so <laughs> long winded spiel, um, but. Um, Yes, so these three these three licenses are really important, and I also have a little question on the board here um, for for folks here. Uh, what's your experience with uh, Creative Commons licensing? Are you familiar? Have you done this before? Um, have you ever licensed any of your work, um, any of your work under these licenses or anything else? Um, so Z has a question in the chat. Um, I hope you don't mind if I read it out. Um, could you not negotiate with artists to release some of the low resolution work on one of these licenses? Um, <laughs> I don't I don't see why not. I don't know. Um, Maria or Allison E, do you either of you have thoughts on that? Um, it's a great question. I don't think it's one we've specifically navigated with our partners. Um but that said, I think um, I don't necessarily see what an issue there, what issue there would be to utilize a low resolution image in this way. It really comes down to the comfort of the creator and what they're willing to license. Some are um, not even comfortable with that. So it's really an individual case by case basis. Thank you. Uh, this is Allison again. Allison B, excuse me. Um, that's a great question, Z, and I wonder too if that's um, a nice kind of stepping stone of comfort. Um, you know, if people that, you know, instead of putting all your work up there full res, maybe a lower resolution might feel more comfortable and then we're always chipping away at open open culture. So that's a great idea for the art, art folks in here. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Okay, let's see what's next. Okay, so now I'm gonna stop my sharing. We are going to do some uploading. Um, the first thing that is involved, if you don't already have an account with Wikimedia Commons, is to make one. So I'm going to share a um a link in the chat. Um, if you already have. Uh, so, someone correct me if I'm wrong. If you already have a Wikipedia account, you should be able to automatically link them. I believe that's what happened. I signed up a long time ago, so um, it's been a little while. But um, if you uh, need one, please please get started with that. Um, and one thing I just want to stress is that if you are making a new Wikimedia umbrella account today to choose a username that is anonymous in some way. Um, maybe don't include your first or last name, definitely don't include your address, um, and definitely don't include where you work, where you work, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, keep it as anonymous as possible. That's general good, good uh, internet hygiene for, for Wikimedia accounts. We'll give everyone a minute or two to create an account or or to link Wikipedia accounts if they haven't done so just yet. This is Kira speaking. We can also make a breakout room if people need a little bit more help with that. 
If so, uh, let me know and we can do that. Um, Richard, username Ferris, is also has joined us and he is also able to help us with that if people need help. Hi, Richard. Thanks for being here. <laughs> um, so, yeah, unless I hear I tell other... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, um, nothing, Judge. Just thanks. I'm glad to be here. I uh, help with whatever. Awesome. You are the best. Um, all right. So if no one's screeching for more for more time, um, I will include um, a link to our dashboard um, here in the chat. And I will also share share my screen again just to let you see what it looks like. Where did it go? There we go. So the dashboard is the, um, goodness, let me move it here. Excuse me. I have a lot of compromised passwords, evidently. It's not good. Um, so <laughs> um, so this, uh, this is what you'll see when you are logged in. Um, when you log into the dashboard, you, um, you'll log in with your Wikimedia account, and it should automatically take you back to this, and there should be an option to join join this program. Um, I'm going to open the chat back up to see if there's any issues. So um, the dashboard allows us to keep track of everyone's work, work together. Um, so when you are logged in, you'll just need to join this program and then this number will go, will go up, which is exciting. Showing you here. I'll give everyone about a minute to to, to get in get on board. <gasps> Seeing that number jump, <laughs> so exciting! <laughs> this is Kira speaking, and yes, if you need any help with this or need us to repeat anything, please let us know. Do we wait another about 30 seconds or so? Oh. Uh, seeing an issue in the chat. Joanna, did you, was that attempting to join the dashboard or make an account? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the dashboard. Oh, okay. Hmm. Oh, okay. Thank you. You have an account already. Um, hmm. This is Kira. I just put the the link. I'm. I don't know, Joanna. My my advice in these situations are usually like, close the browser, open the new browser, put in the URL again, see if that might work. That's good advice. Oh, yes. Thank you, Giovanna. Um, we can also add your your username to the dashboard. Oh, if, yeah. If need be. <laughs> Thanks, Giovanna, for that. Yeah. Um, so, Collaborative learning. <laughs> yeah. Joanna, if you want to share your username either by DM or in the chat, uh, we can add you on the back end if that helps. Oh, perfect. All right. Good deal. <laughs> Thank you, Giovanna. <laughs> oh. All right. Let me know if there's anyone else um, who needs a minute or I might just move on to the exercise. It's so fun to see that number jump. It's just gratifying. Okay, I'm not hearing, I'm not seeing anything in the chat. Um, so I will move on. Um, so as mentioned, we were we're planning to do a different thing, but um I 
for, <laughs> forgot um kind of what what needed to be um communicated to the artists. So we are switching gears and I hope that you'll all bear with us and enjoy this kind of um, 21st century learning experience. Um, so uh, what we're going to do today is we are going to find our own images that are openly licensed in accordance with, uh, with Creative Commons licensing that is welcome on Wikimedia Commons and we're going to upload it. So a great site, actually, <laughs> um, a great site is um, the Creative Commons Search. Thank you for, to Marie for, um, for suggesting that we use this. Um, as you can see, this searches a lot of different things and everything in there is already like, there's not going to be a question, you know, about what license these things have so um so I in order to do this exercise I'm going to ask that you navigate to this page on your computer and um type in your own search query um let's see here I am going to search flower because I did that earlier <laughs> and I found a nice nice image so as you can see, when you um, when you type in a search a search uh, term, it will take you to this really cool um, this really great uh, image result. And here we have it categorized into images and audio, which is really cool. And I'm gonna have to explore that on my own time. Flower audio, um, but I'll scroll through here and briefly kind of hover over the images. And as you can see. Um, the licensing pops up and shows you what what how this image is licensed so as i as i move around i can see that these are all beautifully licensed and and they make a lot of sense um here we see creative commons um uh by the um attribution this one uh actually let's click on that i forgot what that one was Okay, it, it um, is the essay, which is the share alike. So if you make any adaptations to this image, you um, are required to share it under the same license. Um, so on this image here, we see the image. We can see what it's called. <laughs> uh, we can see who, who, who is the uploader, and we can see where this image lives. And then if we scroll down just a little bit, um, the the website gives some information about how to use this um how to use this image um a little bit more about the license so that you don't have to memorize the licenses it's very clearly stated here and then a little information about how to credit the creator so here we have a rich text we have an html and we have a plain text so depending on how you want to use this these tools may be helpful for you um I would love to hear what people have searched. Um, if you want to include that in the chat, just just curious. Um, I'm going to go back over here. Oh, I'm going to go back to my flower search because there's a different one that I'd like to use. So, um, oh, cool. I'm searching for Ghana. Cool. Um, I really like this image because um, it's funky and it's called A Bubble Among Flowers. Um, so I would encourage you all after you've done a search to find an image that you like, um, and, uh, double check that the license is either a, oh, is, is either the open, the CC0, the CCBY, and then some, some numbers like 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, mm -hmm. or, um, SA because remember those are the only three uh, those are the three image licenses that are that are um, okay to upload. Um, I'm seeing some great search terms in the chat. Thank you, all of you. Very fun. Uh, yes, I would also like to be at the beach today. That sounds cool. Um, okay, so I have uh, chosen to to focus on this, the bubble among flowers. So I'm going to go over to get this image. 
which will take me to the Flickr page. Um, and we already know that it's op that it's openly licensed with some caveats, but I'm just going to scroll down and just double check. Oh, <laughs> it's not right where I thought it was, but um, apologies for scrolling on your screen. Taking license history. Okay, so if you just click on that license history link there, um, you can see that it's got, oh, previously licensed as all rights reserved, and then we have a new license, which means I can upload this to Wikimedia Commons. Has everyone found something that they would like to upload? <laughs> um, so I don't know if everyone was, uh, was sent over to Flickr or not, but um, as I can see, there's this uh, kind of the general download uh, icon, which is like the downward facing arrow with a line underneath. So I am going to click on that. I'm going to download the original. Why not? Because it's not my server. Uh, <laughs> not my server. Um, so go ahead and download whatever images, um, whatever images that you found that you'd like to work with. I'm gonna name the 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 file name um, the same thing as what um, the uploader did. A bubble among flowers. This is Kira. Allison, can you share um, switch the view you're sharing? Oh, oh yes. Apologies. Thank you. Um, let's see. Oh yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. Thank you. So full desktop. Um, I just cleaned it up today. So, um, so as you can see, I'm prompted. Thank you, Kara. Um, prompted to, uh, you know, name the, the file name. So I'm saving it as the same thing as what the, the creator called it a bubble among flowers. So I'm going to hit save and my download is complete. So I'll give everyone a moment to do that. This is Kira. I see that Melissa mentioned in the chat that theirs is not on Flickr. Okay. Let's see. Um, let me see if there's another one that I can look at. Do you see any um any kind of that icon might be universal? I don't know. Um or are there any are there any options to download on your on yours? Unfortunately, I'm seeing a lot of flickers um, on on my search results. Hmm. Let me see. Let me stop my share so I don't give everyone whiplash with my searching here. Oh, okay, great, Melissa. Thank you. You can download. So, yeah. However, that kind of appears on your on your repository. Um, oh, great, awesome. Alrighty, let me go back to screen sharing. So, uh, just go ahead and grab those those openly licensed images that that speak to you, and keep that tab open so that we can properly attribute our person our artist or uploader. Go back to my screen. All right. So now I'm going to go over to, where am I going to go? To Wikimedia Commons. I'm already logged in, so I'm going to go to the home page. And Wikimedia Commons makes it really straightforward to upload things, I think, because um, right over here we have a hue, like a an highlighted upload button, and that will take us to the upload wizard. So uh, let me get that into the chat. Let's go back to the home page there. And so when I click on upload, it takes me here to this really cool comic um, that, that talks a little bit more 
about what we covered earlier, like what what's okay to upload and what kind of isn't cool. Obviously, things that you've made yourself. Um, you know, when can't you upload? And then over here, we have the two main exceptions one of which we're leaning on quite heavily today, which is um, if the author granted permission for anyone to use, copy, modify, and sell. And so um, ensuring that the work that you're working with has those licenses uh, means you can, you can upload it. So I'm just going to scroll to the bottom and click next. And then I'll be faced with this page which uh, should look familiar. So you'll click here, select media, select media files to share. And then I'm going to choose the, the image that I just downloaded from that repository. And once it's uploaded, I'm going to hit continue. So here we're given two, we're asked two questions by the upload wizard. Um, is this your work basically, or is this someone else's work and it's free to share? So since this is someone else's work, we'll walk through what this, this question is asking us. Um, basically, same thing we've been saying, you can upload someone else's work as long as it's published under a free license, which all of the images that we just grabbed are. Um, so our first question, do you know what Creative Commons license this work is published under? Yes, we, we all have that information. Um, and here it's asking you which one. So I'm just gonna quickly go back to the other tab to, to remind myself which one it was, because I can't remember. Oh, CC by two. Oh, hmm. that's an older one. Um, Richard or Kira, any, is that? <laughs> What should you do here? Oh, yeah. So the weird thing about Flickr is that uh, at least, yeah, so Flick, Flickr has, tends to have like the, the two, two, I think 2.0 is still their standard option. Okay. So they, they haven't updated to, to 3.0 or 4.0. Would it be, should I just choose 2.5 or is that not? You, you I guess you can choose 2.5 and then change it later. Okay. Or you can. Okay. I mean, it, you know, I'm not sure if it's 100%. Correct, but <laughs> oh, sorry, someone has their hands up. Oh, please. Yeah, uh, this is here, Harry. Go ahead. Yeah, so I was just trying to direct you all to the page that is just opened on the screen. It says you can share um, by 4.0. Yes, so the notice below. Yeah. Wait, I'm sorry. Could you repeat that? <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I um I think that notice says we could share by four uh, four point oh. The 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 image you found. Yes, the, um okay. you were on the page CC by, I don't know. So yes, well could you so to, your, um the the page after your upload um tab. This one. No, the page after the upload tab, the CC by license right after your upload tab. Oh, uh, sorry, right, uh. This the it's here the tab next to the tab you're open right now. Oh, so, <laughs> thank you. <yeah. laughs> Apologies. Uh -huh. So the notice says something like, "If you are licensing your, we can't." Oh, okay. So I thought they were recommending that we should upload um by the use of the four point license. That's why. Mm. Oh, okay. but that's okay. Sorry. Oh no, not at all. Thank you for for asking. Um, you know, I'm not an expert in this. I think that's <laughs> abundantly clear. But uh, I think a lot of people who upload aren't experts and I think that that's okay um hey, you this know, is here. I'm actually I want to ask uh Giovanna or uh Chris do you have advice for this old 2.0 license on like what that would count for since Flickr hasn't updated yet oh Giovanna put something in the, in the chat oh. oh okay Giovanna says we can later change it on the wiki text by adding a template um Giovanna would you recommend we just click 2.5. <laughs> uh, uh, this is Chris. Um, Hi, Chris. So if you use that link that Giovanna posted with the template, you can you can copy that template. And then in this question one on there, you can choose enter a different license. 
oh. in Wikitext format and then simply copy over that license formatting into that option. Um, I, I wish they would have left the 2.0 option on there, but um, uh, in, 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 in the case of <laughs> where we are now, I'm guessing that uh, it's pretty rarely used and it's maybe infrequently observed in you know typical uploads. So that may have been retired, but yes, you can you can certainly enter that license in the enter a different license wiki text format. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful for what a great what a great crew this is. Okay, so yeah, um... we're we're all here to help each other out. So <laughs> thanks for thanks for you know letting us know that <laughs> we can we can be of support. Oh my gosh, absolutely. Um, so thank you, Chris and Giovanna. Um, as you can see, if um, if there's another license that, um, you know, the older licenses, you can put that here um, at the fourth option under number one. And as Giovanna mentioned, all we have to do is do the curly bracket, <laughs> curly bracket, curly bracket, C, C, by. 2.0 and I apologize if this is not an option like an issue for your uh for your uh for the image you've decided to upload um but you may come across this in future and it's good to know um so go ahead and choose which license if that involves putting in some wiki text go ahead um and the next question number two here is where did you find this work enter the website, the book, or the source. So I'm going to go back to the Flickr tab and I'll close that and I'll just copy and I'll paste. And I'm going to go back over here for the third question, which is enter the name of the original author of this work. I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to come back up and it is Scott97006 who made this beautiful artwork. So I'll just copy that and paste. And lastly, we confirm that um, what we're uploading does not include material restricted by copyright, which we know for sure it does not. And I'll hit next. And this, uh, this page is all about describing the image so that it's useful for people who are using Wikimedia Commons. So um, I think it's a good opportunity to add a little more info if you have it um but it's also okay if you don't so i'm just um oh and the title actually has to be um unique i believe so um a, t a bubble among flowers was what that was called and luckily it appears to be um it appears to be unique um the caption is where you can give a little bit more information so i'll just say like artistic photograph of flowers <laughs> with a with a bubble um, and here you have an option to add um, cop uh, captions in other languages um, I'm not going to do that today but you have that option um, here you have a description which is an option to add more detailed information about the about the work if you'd like to, um, or you can leave it the same as the caption. And what's really cool about the um, upload wizard is that the date was automatically filled in because it communicated with Flickr in some way that I don't understand. Um, and lastly, we have um, categories which are, um, are required, I believe, and just kind of add, um, things that will help it be categorized on the commons with other with other things so I'm gonna type in like kind of lame but I'm gonna say like flowers um like art photography um this is an opportunity to do more work um especially if you're you know uploading things that you're really passionate about or if this is your personal collection um same with the caption and description, but for the sake of this, um, for the sake of our time together, I'll just stick with those two and um, and leave it with that. So I'm gonna hit publish files. And okay, <laughs> this next thing is asking if you'd like to add um, any items from Wikidata. 
Um, unfortunately, I don't know what is pictured here, so <laughs> I won't, but um, that is a kind of advanced option if you'd like to. Um, but I'm just gonna skip this step for, for today. And so now that image is uploaded and it's ready to be used. So I'll show you what that looks like when it's uploaded. This is kind of the page, the page that appears when you upload something. Um, big image, you've got a bunch of tools up here. And then if you scroll down, um, there are options for different resolutions for people to download the image. And then down here, we have the caption, the summary, um, which includes some more information, um, the source, and then thanks to Giovanna and Chris, we have the correct license, um, and which is the Creative Commons Attribution 2.0. Um, and so that is really how you upload images and how you describe them and make them available for use for illustrating Wikipedia pages or other, other uses. Um, does anyone have any questions about what we've done together so far? Did you get something uploaded? Um, we can check, I guess our dashboard doesn't, um, oh, Mohammed, do you have a, did you want to share, share something? Um, please. Um, thank you so much for the opportunity. Yeah, I just, thanks. um, I was just trying my hands on it and then I got to a point where um, there is that option to add uh, captions or descriptions in other languages, which um, I think time didn't allow you to touch on. But I was trying one of the indigenous languages that I'm working with, and mm -hmm. it's not being shown. Like it's not among the languages that is accepted. So in case one wants to add um, a description or caption in a language that is not that doesn't exist on Kimida Commons yet, how can one add it? Great question. I defer to Richard. If Richard, do you know anything about that? This is a good question. I don't exactly know the answer. I imagine there's a list maintained somewhere. Um, there are different lists maintained for like Wikidata languages and for Commons languages. Uh, uh, someone should know the answer, but uh, I am not sure of it right now. But I will look into it, and if no one else knows it, I will try to find out. This is Allison. Thank you both for bringing that. Um that up and for commitment to figuring it out. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you for that. Um, did everyone else get the get the uploading going okay? Um, I thought if we wanted to, I could show how, um, I don't think it'll be applicable for this workshop, but I can just show briefly how I would include this on a page um, or if we're kind of feeling done, <laughs> done. <laughs> um, we can also call it. I'm gonna just chat for a minute or anything. This is Kira speaking. Yes, this recording, this training is being recorded. And so we'll be able to send that link to um, everyone, all the registrants afterwards. So thank you for that question. Um, also, Mariana is offering another example in the chat. Um, I can read it, Mariana, or if you want to come off mute and talk about it, please do. Uh, yes, uh, Mariana speaking here. Kira, do you mean uh, to repeat what I put in the chat about yeah. Flickr? Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, when uh, in, in the first, uh, at the beginning of the upload wizard, once you click on upload and you go to the next page, the page, uh, the first uh, step, you have a smaller option, a smaller text um, below the, the blue button, uh, select media file. There is a smaller option below uh, and you can select, if, you, if your image comes from Flickr and you have the URL, you can select uh, share images from Flickr. So I think that doing that, you um, uh, will get the license information correctly without uh, having to figure out how to put it in Wikitext. I think that that can be helpful for that. And there are also a couple of um, tools. Uh, 
for doing this also and that is Flickr to Commons and also Flickipedia, which is a new one. So that 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 uh, those are alternative for mass massive uploads from Flickr. But this one for a couple of images is is great. It's just uh, do the stuff you need uh, and that's it. This is Kira. Thanks so much, Mariana. I also want to upload uplift that uh, Mariana is uh, part of Who's Knowledge who has been doing incredible work on the commons with Visible Wiki Woman. Uh, so if that isn't a campaign that you are familiar with, like deeply encourage you to please check that out. Um, I also see there's some other activity in the chat I wanna uh, highlight. Um, Gio Giovanna, you are, please come off mute. Tell us about another suggestion for Flickr. Tell us about it. I guess Mariana I have mentioned it. It cut right when she was talking, so I'm not sure if she mentioned that exactly example. Uh, but there is also a tool called Flickpedia. Um, this is the link. And if someone here is feeling adventurous, after you try the way that Alan's some uh, taught, and you, I, I would say like try once. Like, and if you are feeling adventurous, you can also try using this um, this tool, and you can actually also add more than one file at a time. And uh, it helps you a little bit with some of the information. Um, but yeah, thank you for this presentation, Alison, it's great. Thank you for your expertise. Uh, literally, it takes a village and uh, you all have been extremely instrumental today. So <laughs> really appreciate it. Uh, this is Kira. I also want to highlight that Chris is in the chat talking about um, practices around language and also looking into uh, the new languages. So um, thanks, Chris, for looking into that. Thanks for that link, Mariana. Um, and thank you. Thank you, Allison. Thank you all. So we're at the part of the workshop now where we have a couple options. Um, I think it could be fun. If people wanted to share, uh, we can do share screen for everyone. Um, if anybody wanted to either like talk through what you're you're uploading or share what you're uploading, we can also create a breakout room if people just kind of want to take this time to um, work silently, kind of like a, a a solo room, but together, solo but together room. If you just wanted to like work on some uploads, and th then we can keep people in here who want to like share screen or talk more or have questions. Really. Um, this the space uh you know this is our, our workshop part so what i'll go ahead and i'll do is i'll create that breakout room and that will be um you can go ahead and get in there if you want to you should see a pop-up at your bottom that says join breakout room and that's going to be just kind of like the 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 quiet room get in there work on some stuff We'll bring you back in about 20 minutes or so just to kind of like bring us all back together before we close out. Um, if you want to stick with us in the main room, please do. Um, and also, if you have to uh, drop off, I also understand that we're so excited to, to be here. We do have another like about another half hour slotted for this workshop. And so we're hopeful now is the time when we we do that uploading together and get some stuff added into the comments and then possibly into into Wiki. Um, thank you also, Richard, for looking into the new languages as well for the comments also in the chat. So yeah, anybody want to volunteer to share their screen or talk through what they possibly have already uploaded? <laughs> Thanks, Mariana. Are any of our friends from the Feminist Institute want to perhaps share something that they've uploaded? Chris can share in a moment. Great. This is Chris. Uh, just give me a few minutes and then I should be ready to, to share out with folks. Thanks. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. I'm also, this is Allison. Um, I'm still working on mine. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, no, no rush. No rush. This is, we're in the workshop part now. So this is where, you know, we're, we're collectively kind of working through it. Yeah. Harriet, go ahead. Yeah, so I, I learned something. Um, you know how we try to avoid duplication of work um, 
in the movement. And, and so I was trying to upload a picture of, um, I think, Obama's visit to the castle here in Ghana. And while I tried to upload it, I was told that there's a copy of this um, particular image already on Commons. So, and then that was like kind of informing me not to do a duplication of work. So I stopped and then looked for a different um, image to upload. So I'm just happy to learn something like this here. Yeah, thank you. So you'll be prompted if there's an image actually existing on Wiki Commons, you could check it out and then compare it. See. Yeah, yeah, thank you. This is Allison B. Thank you so much for sharing that. I, uh, <laughs> I'm not an expert in Wikimedia Commons, and I wasn't sure about um, if what would happen if you tried to upload something. So that's really cool. Not surprised, but it's really cool. This is Kira speaking. I know, uh, Allison B., that you um, are being very modest about your expertise, but I also think that, you know, that's one of the great things about the Wikiverse, right? Is that, and like what's even happened in this workshop is that, like, it's really a product of collective learning. And so the fact that like everybody here is able to participate in that kind of collective learning is very exciting. And it's very much like we're seeing it happen in the moment, <laughs> which is also pretty cool, I think. So um, really thankful for like moments like this. Ooh, Allison, with two L's, I saw your camera on. Does this mean you're ready to share? I, I was just, yeah, joining in more visually. I'm still, I'm working on the upload, but <laughs> when I'm done, I definitely will share. Yeah, uh, no problem. Yeah, go ahead, Harriet. Maybe I could share my screen since I've been able to upload an image. Yeah. Yes. Please. So I saw this, um, let me just quickly share my screen. Um, a minute, please, uh, share screen, okay. Okay, I hope you can see my screen. Yes. Okay, thank you. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh, so I mistakenly closed my screen, um, a minute, please. I mistakenly closed my screen. Maybe if Chris is ready, he could go ahead. I wouldn't want to hold anyone. Yeah. This is Kira. Thanks, Giovanna. Um, Esther, do you want to talk about the image you were able to upload? Sure. Um, so I can share my screen if that's okay. Oh, I have been spotlighted. Exciting. Okay. <clears throat> um, so I decided to upload my own work just because I prefer to upload my work if I have it as opposed to work with somebody else's. So this is a photo that I took um, at Columbia University um, almost a month ago uh, on the day of the first um, encampment breakdown. Uh, and so I just thought it was potentially interesting because it's representative of that day in some capacity. Um, and you can kind of see like different groups of people um, doing their thing. So I added a description here. Um, I started by adding a caption, but my caption was too long. So I made my caption a little shorter. And then um, in my my description, I wanted to put just the the different like representations um, in case people were searching like specifically for um, like Palestinian, pro-Palestinian demonstrators or pro-Israeli demonstrators that they'd be able to find that, um, both of those things which are represented in this photo. 
Uh, I also noted like that the low library building is in the in the photo because I thought that might be something that people would search for. I tried I basically tried to think of like how people might find this image um, and what would be important to tell them. Um, I decided not to like uh, I'm forgetting the word like uh, to um, ascribe any sort of like peacefulness or violence to the protesters because that's not like part of what you can tell from the image despite like what my knowledge is of having been there. So I left out like any statement um, related to that. And then I decided to, because it's my own work, I decided to um, give it a, a CC by um, essay license so that people would be able to share it uh, and also attribute it to me. Um, and if they decide to share it and and um, remix it, they have to give it the same license that I've I've given it. So that could mean that like someone could use it for like a commercial um, publication, they could use it for a Wikipedia article or like an educational blog. Um, they're pretty much free to do what they want. They just have to attribute it um, as well. And let's see. Oh, I also added a couple categories, Columbia University, protest activism and protests, which like there's protest and protests and I didn't really know which one would be better. I think I have this plugin indicate like turned on for me. I don't think to, think this is a Wikimedia Commons thing, but I'm not sure. So I could add um, more categories if I wanted, if I wanted to like drill down into Columbia University, for example, and see if like any of these other categories were appropriate. Like there might be a buildings category. Oh, there is, there it is. So maybe I'd want to add a category for low memorial library so that people could find that um there might be a protest category there's not so maybe i would add a protest category as well because there's also a lot of images on wikimedia commons about protesting at columbia university so maybe that would be a good a good category to add um yeah i think that's it um this is allison b oh. esther could you tell me about that plugin what uh tell I us think more about that Barros is the one who will know which plugin it is. I'll 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 check and see if I can figure it out from my inst like my my um preferences and and share it. But somebody helped me help me add it a while ago and I do not I do not remember what it is. Oh the the, the category one, the hack the hot cat? Yeah, oh hot cat, yep. Thank that you. Is categories, is that what you mean? I think that's what it is, yep. Yeah, I'll um I'll add a link. This is Allison. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> yeah. Hi, this is Kira. Um, I went ahead and closed the breakout room just because there was nobody in there. But if we need to reopen it again, please let me know. Um, and I also wanted to share, Esther, something that you had mentioned that was surfacing for me. And I just wanted to make other people aware of it is that um, Andrew actually resurf restarted a conversation about photographs of identifiable people, uh, particularly around protests. Um, so just kind of uh, trying to create some best practices there. So just like a conversation, just highlighting in case that is of interest. Um, and then there's some questions about, uh, Catherine's asking about hot cat. So I don't know who wants to, who wants to field that about what hot cat is. Is that you, Richard? Sure. It's it's just a tool that it's I guess it's a gadget. Um, I'd be using the wrong term that lets you, uh, you know, yeah, that, that lets you add add categories quickly. It lets you like type the beginning of a category and it'll suggest the end of the end of the possible categories that you know sort of finishes the uh, finish the word. It's a very convenient way to add a bunch of categories and to see if the categories exist, um, rather than than going through, you know, the many other files that might possibly have the category. <laughs> Makes that thing a little bit. Yes, thank you, Richard. This is Kira. Um, Chris says that he's ready. So Chris, over to you. Hey, everybody. Um, I'm Chris, uh, and I did some uploading during the presentation today. Um, uh, and I decided to uh, take a stab at looking through the National Archives from the United States. Um, to see what I might be able to find on uh, murals, actually, um, and, and and then also got distracted by a bunch of other interesting categories that looked uh, plausible uh, that might make for good uploads around this event in some in some respects. So, um, let me share screen. Um, let's see. 
uh there we go share screen the, the bright green one <laughs> um okay i think this will work so there will be a couple of tabs i'll be going through but the first one i wanted to show was just kind of the information about this catalog uh, about this particular offering from the national archive so if folks want to peruse this particular one that I was using uh, to select photos from, I put a link in chat. Um, but for today, um, uh, I uploaded a few images uh, from here. So let me actually go to um, where is our event page? Because our my uploads are tracked there. I had it open <laughs> for a moment. Here it is. Um, so I took a look at a couple of offerings from this catalog and I looked at some that were more architectural in nature. So this one um, is an image of uh, housing in Tucson, Arizona, where they uh, taken some images, like taken a couple of different photographs, this being one of them to document sort of the general architecture of uh, Hispanic neighborhoods um, in parts of the country. So this one is particular to the state of Arizona. Um, and um, the catalog offers some information here. Um, uh, this is a public domain work since it's published by a um, it's published by a you know federal government office. Um, and and so in the National Archives, generally you'll find with few exceptions that um, things published by the National Archives or published through the National Archives are de facto public domain. Um, and so this is just the licensing here is a little bit different than what we talked about today, but uh, certainly like offerings from the US government um, through the National Archives, for example, are going to be good candidates to um, upload to Wikimedia Commons if you happen to find a, um, a repository or a collection there um, uh, related to sort of your topic of interest. Um, so in there, they provide uh, a little bit of information around the photos. It's not like the greatest level of detail. That was kind of my only frustration with the National Archives offering is that the level of detail seems to be more about the collection, but not about individual photos. Um, so the kind of more specific information about like where this was, or maybe if these were particular buildings, if they had some sort of historical um, uh, uh, context you know, around them. Um, that's going to be something that, you know, ha has to be followed up on, I think, later on. But for now, um, there is, you know, some interest and in, in sort of, you know, um, uh, value certainly in the image on its own as, as kind of a piece of architecture uh, representing part of this, uh, part of this community in the kind of Hispanic heritage select photos collection. Um, so, um, but yeah, uh, so I filled this out with like the date and in this case, it's the day of the collection. Unfortunately, again, they don't offer the date for specific photos. Um, there's a, a list of the source. So this brings you to the actual item. Um, and then these were taken by a single photographer um, uh, who is part of this particular office in the Department of Housing and Urban Development. Um, so that was one, uh, I think I took two others, which uh, one of which came from this collection. Yeah, so this one was a mural, like a neighborhood mural that I thought was particularly striking. Um, and so um, the only thing that was, again, kind of frustrating around this with the National Archives is they don't tell you where it was, <laughs> um, which is a little, which I, you might be, I guess if you, they have other pictures of this mural too. So if you look around a little bit, you might be able to devise where it was taken. Um, um, but I couldn't, I couldn't discern it from this specific image. So I might have to take a look into that afterwards or more about the, the collection. And that might provide a bit more information about it. Um, in any case though, uh, it has all the relevant information here about the photo. Um, so this points to the archives again, provides the date when these, uh, photos were generally taken, um, same photographer. So similar deal. And then I took one, I uploaded one more, um, so I come back to the collections page where or the event page here. Here we go. Uh, actually, this is my uploads. So this one is an image by a different photographer. Um, uh, so this is the Wikimedia Commons page this time, but this is the mural constitution, which is actually housed literally in the National Archives um, and is also part of the, arch the National Archives itself as a part of its you know, collection of photographs um, called the constitution. And it's by a photographer named Barry Faulkner. Um, 
And so the, um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the, the muralist is Barry Faulkner. The photographer actually wasn't named. This is just part of a kind of education division of the National Archives own internal kind of record service. So they, they took their own photograph basically within the building, essentially. Um, and uh, this is an older photograph. This was taken in the 1940s, actually. So this, this is a, um, uh, not a new photograph by any means, but um, uh, there are other images of this mural on Wikimedia Commons, but this is one that is somewhat historical and also has been corrected. So it, it and looking at other photos of this mural that are on Commons, this offers a slightly different perspective. And so I thought it might be interesting to upload, you know, basically to provide some, um, you know, a value perhaps in a gallery of photos, you know, you know, documenting the the mirror over time, for example. So, um, so anyway, those are just you know some of the things I was working on doing today. But um, but yeah, thank you for letting me showcase a little bit of uh, the work here, um, and thank you to all the presenters today on your helpful orientation and you know primer on how to get started with this work. This is Kira. Thanks, Chris. You're welcome. Um, Allison, were you ready? So I have been trying to upload, but I'm having an issue. The first few ones I was doing, um, they were already like uploaded to Wikimedia Commons. And now the image I'm trying to do, I was doing a little research um, because basically the Creative Commons license that it's under, it's not an option um, like in the first step where you select a Creative Commons license um, and it's kind of been updated. It was um, the CC, hold on one second, let me, um, CC by .nc .sa .2 um, And kind of when you go on the Creative Commons website, it's saying the present day equivalent is the CC by 4.0 deed. Um, but I don't want to like choose a new license for somebody. So I've just been looking for other images as well as listening. This is Kira. No, thanks. I feel like that's a real some real life examples of this work and like yeah. what places it can take us. Um, exactly. Marie, did you have something? Yeah, I mean, I just uploaded one of my own images figuring, you know, um, timely in that we had the Northern Lights visible here. Um, I'm based in Seattle, Washington. So I figured I'd upload a photo I took on my roof over the weekend and, um, just any kind of documentation of the solar storm would be pretty interesting. And I think, you know, an interesting practice for um, sharing these things freely on Wikimedia Commons. I learned so much from Allison and Kira and everyone who shared during this portion of the presentation. So just sending my gratitude. This is so beautiful. This is Kira. This is so beautiful. I'm so <laughs> glad you got to see it. It was super cloudy in Baltimore, so it wasn't very visible. So I didn't, I missed it, but um, so beautiful. Yeah, shockingly visible um, at 1 a.m. here in Seattle. So, <laughs> so beautiful. So beautiful. Um, Thank you. I do see that there's a question in the chat from Mohammed um, requesting that uh, Chris sh show about hot cat. Oh, and then I also see that we have uh, Glory has their hand raised. Uh, Glory, you want to go ahead? You're muted if you're talking. Okay, this is Kira speaking. Oh, I don't know. Oh, their hand just went down. Um, if you have another question, please uh, get it in the chat. We can also get back to it. But um, 
Thanks for coming, Z. And then, uh, yeah, Chris, if you want to demo some, we'd love to have you demo. Sure. Um, uh, Lori, if you uh, are able to come in, uh, please feel free to interrupt. Um, the, the, the demonstration here won't take very long, so feel free to chime in if you come in with your question from earlier or, or comment. Um, okay, let me share your screen again. Um, so I'm going to go to one of the images that I just uploaded um, as a demonstration of, of um, HotCat. Um, so uh, to get folks started, the way that you incorporate up HotCat in your account, let me actually start there and then I'll come back to this image, um, is when you are signed into your account, um, you'll see that there's a list of options at the top of the page and one of them you want to select is preferences. I'm going to go there and navigate there real fast. Um, under preferences, you'll see a, you know, a number of different uh, items here about things you want to change about your kind of experience and general kind of interface with editing. Um, the one place you want to navigate to for HotCat is gadgets. So I'm going to click on that. And down here, there should be a choice to look for HotCat. There's also a bunch of other things here as well which I would encourage folks to take a look at to see if it might be useful for how you use um, Wikimedia projects in general. Uh, but yeah, one of them is um, the hotcat function right here uh, under tools for categories. Um, so here you'll want to hit this checkbox and then hit save. And then that will automatically add kind of the functions and, hot, and sort of features that hotcat provides around um, adding, removing, and changing category names. Uh, you can also look at documentation for this here if you want more details on how to use it. Uh, but in terms of the basics, I'm going to navigate back to uh, my image from earlier. Um, a lot of hotcats functions come um, in the form of the stuff at the bottom of uh, a lot of Wikimedia pages, including Wikimedia Commons. So on any given media page, um, or file page on Wikimedia Commons uh, is where all the categories are listed, as some of you know. And so um, what, Hotcat, what Hotcat does is it allows you to use a number of these functions down here to change or otherwise add um, categories to the page. So um, there's options to sort of modify several categories at once, but if you simply want to add a category, um, to this page, what you can do is just hit this plus button at the end of um, kind of this set of buttons. And it will, you know, create a text field here. And so, um, you know, for this, um, I could, for example, put in something about, um, so I did, I did learn that this is um, in Tucson, like the image here, it took place, uh, it was, was taken in Tucson, Arizona. Um, and so, what I could, if I can spell Tucson correctly, one of those tricky, <laughs> tricky city names, um, uh, I can put in the city uh, as a possible category um, here um, to further specify kind of where where this image was. So in case folks want to generally look for um, photos or images or media about Tucson, Arizona, this would be the way to do it. So then once you've selected that category, which is populated just because I started typing it in, um, so this is a pre-existing category. You can hit OK, and then it simply updates the page automatically. So there's no kind of wiki formatting or wiki text needed to update the categories in this way using Hotcat. Um, uh, there's other options on here as well to remove uh, categories that aren't appropriate or uh, you know might need to be changed or replaced for some reason. Um, and um, and then if you want to add multiple categories, um, you can do so using, I think, just either of these modify buttons. You can modify several categories, or you can add uh, sort of multiple categories at one time uh, using these other functions uh, on here as well. Um, any questions uh, on that very brief demonstration? <laughs> just checking the chat here. Sorry, I have a couple windows open to support my 
commons investigation and sort of archives <laughs> diving work and also attending to the, the discussion here as well. Uh, you're welcome, Allison. Um, all right, I'll stop sharing for now. Uh, Mohammed, thank you also. I'm glad that the explanation was helpful. Um, I'll stop sharing for now, but if folks have questions that uh, about Hotcat for later, I'm happy to, to reshare as needed. Thanks, Chris. This is Kira speaking. Um, Jude is uh, surfacing an issue that I think is like talked about a lot within the Wikiverse is in terms of the, the format for video. So oftentimes by default, including even this recording of this video right now, uh, it creates automatically an MP4 format, which is probably one of the most common ways that like your cell phone and everything else captures it in. However, um, with Media Commons, that is not a format that is supported. And so previously there was a tool that I think has been broken for a while now um, that allowed you to kind of like convert an MP4 video file to a WebM file, which is the file that you're able to do video files on uh, Wikimedia Commons. And honestly, we haven't ha come up with uh, open source it, um, converters. We, of course, there's many paid converters uh, for like that kind of work that we've been um, doing at Art and Feminism, but uh, would love to hear collectively if um, folks have other experiences or advice around around video. And also Jude, um, I wanna invite you in to, to maybe speak more to the, of the issue. Um, what tool were you using before, Kira? Was Because uh, I wonder if Handbrake would do what you're describing. I'll drop it in the chat. Because I, I use that when I'm um, encoding like large preservation videos into much smaller sizes. So it might be a file format that is supported by Handbrake. Ooh, thanks for that. Yes, Chris, it was <laughs> video to comments. And I feel like it's just been like breaking every time we try to use it. And Handbrake's the one that you've been using. Great, Jude. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> um, this is Chris here. So I'm just going to drop a link into chat for kind of a general help page on comments on converting video, which unfortunately does feature video to comments as sort of like, quote unquote, the easiest example, which it probably was at one time, but it sounds like it has since not been the case. Um, uh, personally, due to, due, due to the complexity around uploading videos to Commons, I have infrequently done it, <laughs> uh, which is probably a very common experience amongst Commons uploaders. Um, there are a number of other online conversion tools that are listed here on this help page um, that folks, if, if you've used them, happy to hear your experience using them. I have not tested these myself. Um, thinking about like the, it looks like the video cut tool, um, video converts, um, some of these are, looks like online tools. Some of them are, um, uh, uh, services on the, uh, tool server, like the Wikimedia tool server. Um, and then there are some like, you know, like actual software that you can download to convert locally, uh, on your computer. Um, so, um, happy to hear from others if you have used these tools reliably. Um, it sounds like the, you know, from the, Kind of summary at the top page um at the top of this help page is that um a, a lot of video tools you know for, for any given video tool, there's, there's going to be some limitations um and drawbacks that may may, may make it such, such such that it may not work with all kind of file types for example um or there may be some other limitations on like the amount of time or kind of file size that a particular platform or software can handle um so it's it's a um uh, it's an un, it's an unresolved issue in the movement now. <laughs> this is Kira, and thanks Esther for your suggestion in the chat as well. Again, our collective learning, we're really we're really getting there. Um, but we are now pretty much at time. 
And so I want to first um, just real quickly, let's go ahead and just share. Um, just look at look at this work we've done together in this time, which is very exciting. Uh, we have collectively done 31 edits and we've done 10 comments uploads. I also want to highlight that in terms of like the activity tracking time, if you have some time, you know, before the 22nd, it would still be part um, considered part of this workshop. So that's very exciting. Uh, if you want to continue working on some uploads for the commons, which we definitely encourage you to do so. So congratulations and good work to all of you. Um, I want to thank Allison, Allison Marie, uh, so much for presenting today. So great. I want to thank Jude for helping make today's session all possible on the back end. Shout out to Jude. Um, and thank you all for joining us. If you are interested in holding your own art and feminism event, we'd love to talk. So please let us know. I will drop in the chat one more time. Uh, our website and email, as well as the Feminist Institute's uh, website and email. So please do get in touch. And if we could just close out with a couple collective breaths together, and then we'll let you all all back to your to your Wednesday. So we'll do three collective breaths together. If you want to close your eyes, have your camera off, or you know whatever feels good in your body and soul right now. So we'll take a breath in. And out, and in again, and out, and one more time, in, and out. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we hope you have a great rest of your Wednesday. We'll talk soon. Thanks, y'all.